thank you for tuning in. I am Patty Lawler, and I'm so excited about the show for today. I am going to show you how to create an antipasto salad. Now, notice I said create rather than make, because if you create something, you elevate the process, the drudgery of going to the market, rinsing, chopping, peeling, slicing. It goes to a whole new level. You become creative. You're going to make your salad. You are going to be make an um, absolute masterpiece in the privacy of your own kitchen. I came to this during the, the spring, during COVID-19, when we were in lockdown. I had more time on my hands than I've had in my entire life. And I thought, what to do? And I thought, I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to enjoy the moment, and I'm going to tap into my creative side. And honestly, just between you and I, I always wanted to be a, a pastry chef or a sous chef or someone that created salads and sauces and stews. So this was my perfect time to bring myself into that creativity in my kitchen. So please join me. We're going to start, and I hope you will have fun watching me as I have give, serving this to you. I'm going to start with an interesting thing. It is a little bulb, and I hope I didn't forget him, of garlic. When I was very young, my mother had a friend, and her name was Philomena, and she was a fabulous Italian cook, as was her mother. Her mother and her father uh, came as a young couple from Gubbio, Italy, and the mother brought with her the recipes of the Italian kitchen, not all written down, all in her mind, in her memory. So Filipina, a uh, Philippine, excuse me, was really um, destined to be a good cook. And whenever I would visit her, I would marvel at her tiny kitchen. It was tiny nonetheless. And she um, created great dinners from that tiny kitchen. But anyway, in the olden days, it was a wooden salad bowl that was used. And the, in the Italian kitchens, that salad bowl was only used for the salad. And the prep to the salad bowl was very, very important. They would take a clove of garlic, Philomena would, and she would rub it all along the sides of the bowl. Now she added pressure to the garlic and that was seasoning the wood. I don't know if I'm seasoning this um, ceramic bowl, but I remember Philomena and it gives me a sense of contentment and a sense of um, oh, just when I was younger, being fascinated with cooking. And then you start to smell the garlic, actually. And then you start to transport yourself back into Philomena's kitchen where the action began. Fabulous Italian meals. So I think that's pretty, pretty set. Now, Philomena would set the garlic aside because it would go right into her salad dressing, which was a curate. I'll just set it there. Or she would put it right in the salad. She would grate it up nicely and put it in the salad. Now I'm using uh, romaine lettuce. And as you can see, the romaine lettuce is leaf lettuce. And I've learned that when you have iceberg lettuce or leaf lettuce, you want to be very particular. You don't want to put any of your brown uh, or wilted lettuces into your salad. You want to be very, very selective. You don't want to cut the leaves. You want to shred them. If you, and I did this when I didn't have time, I would just stick a big old paring knife into a, an iceberg lettuce head and crack it open so I had something to eat. Well, you, you shorten the life of the poor iceberg head. It'll turn brown and wilt very, very quickly. So what I'm doing now is I am shredding my lettuce and I'm making it bite size. I don't want this vein in my salad or this stem part. I want to take him out, put him over here, and just use the, the leafy part. 
And as you can see, I'm making edible pieces. See this brown? We don't want that in the salad. Um, I'm making edible pieces. They're not very large and they're not very small. Uh, if we were rhinoceroses, it would be okay to make pieces big, but we're not. So what I'm doing with all of the pieces, I'm going to be making them bite size. And notice I'm taking the leaves off the, um, off the, the head of the romaine lettuce uh, as if I am peeling an onion. I'm going right to the, look at the stem and get the one that's next in line. And I'm going to do that and fill up this salad. Uh, I shouldn't say fill it up. I have to remember, how many am I going to serve? I'm going to serve, I'm going to try to make a salad, an antipasto now, that's worthy of six people as a side dish, not as an entree. And I don't want it to be all romaine lettuce because I have tons of other ingredients to include. So I don't really want to have it too much lettucey. This is basically, this is going to be the foundation of the antipasto. Now, this is a beautiful lettuce leaf I thought I would just bring. I'm not going to use it, but why throw it away? You can use this as um, to cover a plate and then put cheese cubes on it. It, it dresses up your buffet table. And I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to move on to spinach. The spinach is another fine vegetable. By the way, all of the vegetables have been rinsed thoroughly by me. My hands are clean, and I, I look like a pack mule coming in here. But I uh, have everything at my, my place, you see. I know where to reach and where to find it. And that's important, too, in your kitchen. If you're spending half the time running back and forth to the refrigerator looking for the carrot, oh, and then the onion box for the onion, you lose your creativity. You lose your, your moment where you should be sitting or standing, if you will, making your salad and looking at the texture and more or less enjoying the process. Don't worry about your Sears bill. You have bigger things to do. You're, you're in your kitchen and you have to create. So now I'm going to take a little bit of the spinach. The spinach, as I said, was washed. And the only thing I'm going to do, because I, I don't care for stems, uh, I'm going to take the stems off as I'm putting the spinach in. And this color green is going to really perk up the salad. You want variety. Now, iceberg lettuce is a great choice for a lot of people. But if you're hosting, you want to have uh, color, lots of color in the salad. And spinach is your color provider. He's the answer to everything. And he's going to perk this up, perk the romaine lettuce up as I'm doing this. Again, no stems. And again, I'm doing edible bites and I'm not cutting the spinach. What I'm doing is shredding. And I'm thinking how beautiful this is starting to look only because I want to keep my mind in, in a creative mode. I don't want to think about too much of what we've been suffering it as, uh, as we look um, to the spring or maybe to the fall. Um, keep yourself centered in what you like to do. Keep yourself centered in positivity. And who could not be more positive than the only decision you have to make is to salad or not to salad? That is the question. So I'm going to put a little bit more, and then I'm going to take my little um, paddles here, and I'm going to toss a little bit. At this point, you might want to add a little bit more of the romaine, a little, which I might, just for color. So I'm going to come back and see he's the last one, last man standing here, and put him in. All right, so that looks pretty, pretty good. Now next we're going to do um, red onion. I chose red onion because, number one, you don't cry when you cut a red onion. It's a great little onion uh, taste-wise, and it's going to put a punch um, to the salad with color. 
It isn't really an antipasto yet. At this point, you're just making a salad. So I'm going to take the red onion and I'm going to cut him. Now this little interesting, um, this little interesting board, he's at least 40 years old. When I had my first apartment in Washington, D.C., I purchased him. And he has been a fine uh, uh, cutting board for me. I've had lucite, I've had marble, I've quartz. But this guy, the size of him, is just perfect for me when I'm just doing small salads. Um, I had a very small kitchen, and he ended up on the burner, so that's why he was burnt. But I kept him because I used this side. And, of course, for sentimental value. So the red onion we're going to cut First, we're going to cut pretty chunky the red onion, but I'm going to slice him so that he won't be, you don't want to overcome the salad with the taste of onion. So we're going to just kind of cut him, kind of hit and miss, so that he has, we see some of the color and a little bit of the onion. won't be overpowering, little tastes of onion. There's nothing worse than getting a fork full of only onion. And this knife I'm using, he's, the, he's a terrific knife. I bought him at a um, auxiliary uh, sale for the fire company. They were selling knife kits and they said, don't forget the tomato knife, he was extra. And this little fellow, he works beautifully. He cuts terrific uh, everything from onion to carrot, just everything. And gosh, it's, I think he has to be at least eight or nine years old. All right, so that's it. And then I'm going to use my paddle to make sure I have the onion in the base. Okay. And then I'm going to take my carrot. Now I'm going to cut the carrot at both ends and he's been washed thoroughly and then excuse the expression but I'm going to skin the carrot and this will provide lots of color to the base of the antipasto. Now I'm going to show you if you're doing um, Oh, you want garni or for a pot roast or something. You could just take your um, peeler and just go boom, boom. And they're long um, strips of carrot that are very, very, very nice in, in, in a group. All right, so I don't want that real long kind of, um, kind of uh, string of carrot. I just want it to be a little dash, a little spoke. This is very much fun to do, to kind of get them. Now, if you have your own garden, it said you can, you don't have to wash the carrot so thoroughly because the nutrients, it is said, it is in the skin of the carrot from growing in the soil. This, you could, if, you have, if you like to compost what's left on the table, you can pretty much put in your compost pile. All right, let's see what that looks like. We don't want to have too much carrot either. Yeah, that's just about enough. Maybe a little more. I'm not going to fill up the whole salad bowl. Uh, it just looks stuffed. So we want a little bit of that salad bowl. Um, it, we don't want it mounded over. That's what I'm trying to say. So I've got the salad. There we go. All right. And next we have avocado. And you're going to watch my fine knife now with the avocado. What I like to do with the avocado, uh, some people like to skin it completely. But if you live alone, I, I, as I do, I just skin what I'm going to use. And then, again, the avocado will preserve better. Uh, and the browning and, and the wishy-washy insides turn really, um, oh gosh, is, you can hardly, it, it, does, it doesn't even look like avocado if you let it um, 
if you cut it and not use it. See how beautifully green this is? That's what you want. And if I cut the whole avocado, I would end up with uh, brown and it's, the texture is even uh, pretty, pretty raunchy. So I'm going along. The, the tomato nice is also is very good to, when you peel an apple, it's very, very good. He's just terrific. And I'm, I wish I looked up to see what the name of the, the um, inventor or the company, and I couldn't find it to bring to the show. But if you get a good look at it, um, you might be able to go online. And he's, he's just fantastic. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cut pieces here. So they're not real tiny, but they're not real big either. So and then I'm going to very gently try to get them to to come off almost like a looks like almost like a checkerboard there. And he's uh, the avocado is adding a lot of color, uh, not only the the greens, but the uh, it's kind of like an eggshell color. Great. And then I'm going to kind of separate them a little bit. You always want your vegetables to be cold and fresh when you're working with them, especially for a salad. And the salad should be the last thing if you're having a dinner party. The salad should be the very last thing you, um, you create. It should uh, salad from creation right to the, the table. Next is mushroom. Now we're going to start layering. I'm not going, this is the basis, and now I'm going to start layering. And I'm going to use mushroom knife. I've taken the stem off of the mushroom uh, because, well, he's, he's not uh, very attractive. And so I'm going to kind of just layer now the mushroom. And then after the mushroom, we'll layer the tomato. And see, here you go. I'm going to pop the, that stem. Now, you, if you want to recycle, you can make stuffed mushrooms. And you have a, a head start because you've saved the, the mushroom stems. Because the stuffed mushroom basically is just a um, little sausage, a little stuffed, uh, some um, mushroom, and a little breadcrumbs. So you're good to go with the the stumps, if you don't like to throw things away. And I'm calling them stumps, but they really are the stems. A little more. All righty. We don't want to be here till Christmas, me with my salads. You have a life to, le to lead. All right, and one more. There we go. And next is the tomato. And I use the cherry tomato um, for, for antipasto. There's a rogue tomato for us. We'll bring them back to the board. And again, I'm going to put them in kind of, separate them out a little bit. And of course, the tomato brings lots of color. Maybe one more, just for good luck. Before I leave the world of tomato, I think I brought a Roma tomato, just a, a, a hint. If you like to freeze tomatoes, now tomatoes this time of year are scrumptious. They're at farmer's markets all over. This is the one, it's the Roma or the plum tomato to get to freeze. He's, a, he's what they call a meteor tomato. So what you do is you take him, you wash him off, you put a little X up here at the top where his little stem is, and then you put him skin and all, you emerge him in boiling water, and you let him boil for a while until you see that the skin is giving away. Then you take him out of the boiling water, put him in a, a colander, let him rest for a moment, and then you're going to uh, put the tomato 
in uh, ice, uh, well, they call it an ice water bath, and then the skin will come off, then you can handle them, and then you put, put them in your freezer cup, whatever you use to freeze your vegetables, or a freezer bag, and voila, you have a, um, a tomato to use in other sauces or casseroles or whatever. So from the tomato, we go to an interesting, um, uh, one of my favorites is the English cucumber. I, I found him late in life, the English cucumber, uh, but he is so worth the extra money and he is um, beautiful in a salad and he is a um, real scrumptious kind of a, a, a cucumber taste. And his, his little seeds are very easy to digest. So I'm a real fan of the English cucumber. And again, I discovered him very late in life. So I'm going to keep a little bit of his um, skin on because he's so perfect. He's so pretty. Just a little bit to give him a little bit of a, a stripe feeling. Okay, and we are going to, we are going to cut them thinly. And then I'm going to cut them again. So I have little half moons. So not only are we looking really at the color of the, the antipasto, but the texture of the antipasto and the, um, really the, the variety of shapes and sizes of this wondrous uh, thing called salad. So I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to put them in all different areas. Again, we don't want the cucumber to take center stage. We want enough that when you do it this way, um, uh, your guests can see exactly what's in the salad. And if they don't like something, if they're allergic to cucumber or mushroom, they can take it out. So after we have the, the English um, cucumber in, now we start with the fun stuff, the Genoa salami. Now, let me just say this. At this point, you can have a salmon salad. You can have a, a chicken salad, um, blob of chicken salad in there. You could have ham and cheese. You could have turkey. You could have so many different salads at this point. But now I'm going to go really into the authentic Italian salads. So I'm going to roll up my little Genoa salami like this. And I'm going to try, maybe give him a rest, my, my favorite knife. Try, this is a sharp knife. Let's see how he does. So yes, I'm rolling them into, he's good, into small little, and I don't want to be stingy with the meat or the provolone cheese. I want to make sure there's an abundance. So we're going to put the meat, or the, as we call it, the Genoa salami, um, the other thing you could use is um, capricola, all the different types of meats, roast beef. I mean, it, but I'm pretty much staying Italian just because it's antipasto. The, it, many times you see a um, hard-boiled egg in the antipasto, which is nice, but I kind of stay away from the hard-boiled egg. I don't know why, but I do. All right, need another piece. Also, while I was on um, lockdown, as you'd say, or wasn't able to socialize or going anywhere, I was able to organize my spices, throw the old ones out, and um, arrange them in alphabetical order. I was able to clean out my refrigerator. There was things in that refrigerator that were old enough to vote, and they are gone. And you, you'd be surprised how um, you have a sense of contentment when everything is in order. It really, um, forever it seems to be, I've been a flash in the pan. So um, the time in quarantine or lockdown at, at COVID, I try to be useful. 
and, uh, po and stay positive. So we have enough of the old, old um, Genoa salami. I'm going to put a little bit more in, some stragglers. They're not exactly rolled, but they'll add color. And next we have our provolone. Cheese, an Italian favorite. And you can use all types of cheese. There is uh, actually, you can even grate some of the, uh, I'm not sure I'm saying this correctly, Asiago cheese. You could grate it. And these form very nice little um, clumps. They're a little more cooperative than the Genoa salami. So we're going to put them in. And you don't want to be stingy with the cheese. I'm going to put another. And you can always go back and add other vegetables if you want. I sort of like just having it where it's layered. And again, you're going to see I'm not going to put, I am not going to fill it to the brim. Now, interesting enough, what I'm doing, if you don't want to put it in a bowl, you can also put it on a platter and on your um, island, and people can make their own uh, salad right from the, the platter. You know, put a row of provolone balled up, a row of English um, cucumber, a row of the, the cherry tomato, a row of the uh, lettuces. Salad is healthy eating. I try to, actually, I eat salad, um, I'd say for supper, five out of seven days of the week. My uh, meal, my midday meal is more substantial, but salads are, um, they're just great. So then after that, we have the old black olive. You could use the green, but um, I like the black. Now, this interesting thing I got in Salem, Massachusetts, is it's a dipper for the olive. So I put it in, and I let the olive shake it around so the extra uh, olive oil from the can stays there, and olive comes with me. And I, um, I try to buy things for the kitchen. You see, I've always liked the kitchen, but I never had time to be in the kitchen. Um, when I go on trips, and then when I use them, I think of the wonderful time I had in Salem, Massachusetts. I went during the Halloween festivity. I think one of the pictures of me on the intro is, how about me? I'm using my fingers now. I'm very, I must be very, very uh, at ease with you as an audience that I'm, I'm putting my fingers in there. Excuse me. But anyway, one of my pictures is with the, my two friends, and we're sitting at a beautiful outside cafe with uh, witch hats on. And that's where this little gadget came from. I love gadgets. And see now the olives are contributing to the texture, and they're contributing to the, um, the color, and of course the taste. And one more, using my fingers for good luck. All right, so then I'm going to take my spoons, and I'm going to just kind of go like that to put it in. And then last but not least, we're going to put the croutons in. And again, you don't want to be heavy with the croutons. Now, you know, this is a fabulous dinner if you have people over an easy dinner. You serve the antipasto, and then you have tray pizza, and then you go for broke with the dessert. You either have tiramisu or gelato or something like that, and everybody, nice glass of wine, everybody's as happy as clams. Then I put a little more cheese, since it is the antipasto, and I, this cheese now is just regular Parmesan, but you could use any. This is where you would be grating the Asiago cheese. All right, so we have that on. A little bit more. Don't be skimpy with the cheese. It is Italian, after all, so it has to be cheesy. And then for 
a special treat, and it's like a little bit of, not a little garni, you put a little parsley, and it really, it makes it look like it came from a deli in New York. And there you have it. And I've created it, and I'm proud of it. And I took time, and I shared it with you. So all's well that's in, in the well. So this is my antipasto salad. We'll close with just a couple of hints. One of the things you could do is, after the party is over, and you have rogue pieces of salad in the bottom of your salad bowl, you could put them in a freezer container, and then you could put tomato juice, V8 or tomato juice, in the container, and you can freeze it, and then you can, at a later date, you can use it as a cold soup, like a, uh, what I forget the name, gazpacho, I think they called it. The other thing is, if you're cutting onion, if you leave it, uh, if you cut it under cold water or you put it in the refrigerator to chill before you cut an onion, you're not going to have tears. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay healthy. I want you to stay connected. And I want you to stay creative. And until next time, on behalf of all of us here at ECTV, thank you for tuning in.